welcome back to my channel and I'm here today with my baby <laughs> my other baby's lying on the other side of the camera we're not moving him he's gonna stay put so today we are here to update you about our first step forward in foster care so if you missed our last update video this might be a surprise to you you might be like foster care what that was like the big announcement of the last video and I highly recommend I just realized I haven't put all of the adoption videos in a playlist yet but I'm gonna do that so those will be linked down below so if you've missed our journey it's been a crazy journey we started back in March and we started off thinking that we were adopting internationally and now we are at this point doing foster care domestically here in the United States. Um, our goal is to foster to adopt. That's actually something that I kind of want to open with before we talk about yeah. where we're at right now because we got a lot of questions after the last foster video and I actually answered this in my Q&A, but in case you didn't see that, I think this is an appropriate time to answer that. A lot of people, I think, got the impression and we didn't exactly clarify because I thought, for some reason I thought it was obvious, apparently it was not. Um, but a lot of people were like, I thought you wanted to adopt. So now that you're going to be foster parents and then they would kind of go on or like, I'm so glad that you're going to be foster parents. And I mean, yes, we are going to be foster parents, but to clarify on that, our goal is to adopt out of the foster care system. Uh, I guess in the very, maybe it was the very first adoption video that we made foster care, um, really wasn't on our minds or that was the last thing that we wanted to do because the last thing oh yeah. someone asked about that too but right on. because we had an idea of um, bringing someone into the home building our family unit you know this is our family whatever we don't want anyone leaving or whatever but our perspective has changed our minds have changed and so um, our goal is still to adopt but with being foster parents, we're just taking care of a little rug rat that oh. I'm, didn't mean that. No, he didn't mean that. Like, but we grew up in a culture kids. where we weren't even allowed to watch rug rats, yeah. so um, <laughs> my instant reaction is. You take care of of someone that can't take care of themselves, um, and uh, they're taking it out of a situation that's pretty bad. And those parents have an opportunity to um, get their stuff together and get their situation up to par uh, with the state that will allow them to take care of their children. Yeah. And uh, if they can do that, then we will gladly give them their child back. And uh, I hope I hope the best for their situation, but um, a lot of the times that doesn't happen and kids go up for adoption and we're willing to, to take them in yeah. permanently. I have so many thoughts in, in like response to what you just said. Now I'm, I'm trying to think back to circle around. So first off, yes, that is it. I think we had two major misconceptions about foster care. One was we did not understand when we started our journey in general, foster care, or really even fully adoption, that when parental rights are terminated, they're terminated. And I thought in the foster care system that was never a thing, that the goal for all of eternity was family reunification. So you could have a kid seemingly in your family for years and then the parent could turn their life around and say, well now, I want my child back and it's like this has been our child for six seven years or whatever that's not true we've covered this when parental rights are terminated they're done yeah because um we've known people and and they go to uh, uh we've known like multiple families that have gone through the same thing which we hear the vague story but it's oh we're going back to court to battle with the family because they're trying to take their kids back well we just weren't clear on what that story was. Right. I mean, I'm sure if I was addicted to drugs and the city came and take my, took my kid away and I got my shit together, I would go to court and battle for my kid. I would want my kid to come back home. Yeah. So well, you have to see it from their perspective too. Yes. But. And what I was going to say about what you said earlier when you said like <clears throat> parents getting their stuff together. Some people also commented last time saying, um, you know, it's such a light way of talking, light way of talking about a family's life, like getting their act together, getting their life together. Honestly, I'm not here to talk about that. 
Okay, either. yes, but we don't even mean it that light. Like, I think what you have to understand is like, uh, having you don't the have government to come in anything. and take your kids away, and that's the rule, that's not a light situation. Well, yeah, and I was just going to say, no... we're not going into this light. Just because yeah. we're saying getting their life together, that's the shortest summary you can give. But we're aware that it is complex and painful, and a lot of people are dealing with the disease and the difficulties and everything that comes along with addiction, and there's so much to that. So we don't take that lightly. And actually we had this conversation in part of our mindset changing, like he said, also having, so there was the shift of, you know, backing up, realizing, okay, when parental rights are done, they're done. So that was kind of interesting to learn, but then also having the shift of like, Hey, it's, it's okay if kids have to come and go because we can be a safe haven for them in that in between period while their parents are hopefully able to pull their life together. But at the both. same time, when, when a lot of times when, Parental rights are are terminated. The parents don't even show up. Yeah, like that's a common. And they're not thing. even showing up to the visitation periods during the foster care period. So they don't even care. Yeah, there are things that lead up to that or point. The, or there's still uh, too on drugs to to not even be aware of the dates and exactly. Uh, but the, I was going to say priorities. Keep yeah. in mind as we're saying all of this. We're, we haven't done anything yet. So when we actually venture into this world, like we're just like talking based on research and conversations that we've had with many people, but we haven't done anything yet. But also to take any statements we say as a general, there is no general way of, of talking about any of this because every single foster care situation, the thousands of them that are out there in each county, they are all very mm -hmm. unique. So I can get specific and talk about one person's situation, but you might seem, or some people might take that as a general thing. Like, oh, this is what happens to everybody, but it's... It's all very individual and yeah. unique. So yeah, so us, you know, getting so. used to the idea of like, okay, kids coming and going, like we're okay with that. But the conversation that we were having around that around like okay we want to adopt but if kids have to come and go like that's what it is we can be that safe haven in between but we had this realization when we were like okay so like when parental rights are terminated that means it was not a good situation for the child it was a bad situation and on our end it's like okay so now we have this family member obviously it's also not as simple as like yay we have a family member because that that child our child is now carrying around that history of of trauma whatever degree that is whatever age they are they're carrying that but also there's another civilian out there in the world that was so I don't know how to word this, so I'm just going to say it was so out of control their life that they, the government wouldn't even let them keep their child. They couldn't do the things needed to keep their child. So their child was taken away. They're still out there in the world. What are they doing? Are but they the government committing doesn't crimes? Go around patrolling who to uh, take away from. It's like yes, the cops but, are being called on these people. Yes, and it's like a good citizen noticing there's a problem. There's an investigation. Yeah, but I didn't get to the point. Them. The oh. point that I'm making, <laughs> I'm like very out of it, is that this person still exists. This parent is not just like, oh, their rights are terminated, now they're our kid. Yeah, it's like, yeah. so what happens to this adult now? Like, that was the conversation we had. Like, are they committing crimes? Are they, like, we, as much as we want to adopt, this is the point of that. I'm sorry I interrupted you, but I just wanted to get this I point I interrupted out. you. <laughs> the point is that as much as we want to grow our family, we want to take in a child that needs a home, there's almost this realization we had where it was like just as much. We're like, I also really want people to be able to get better, not only to get their kid back, but so that they can be a healthy, happy, thriving member of society, not, not so in the pits, in the dumps that like, sorry, you don't get your kid, but now you can just keep using drugs or committing crimes or well, the thing going to prison or whatever. The, the government also helps those people, puts these people into programs to get them on the right track to get their kid back. They're not just like, hey, we took a kid, they're in foster care. 
hope we see you in six months and everything's going better. Uh, so, yeah, we just went off on a huge rant. Um, but we're going to circle back to where we are right now because we have had one foster care meeting and I was talking about this on Instagram. So I think I mentioned to you guys, or we mentioned to you guys in our first announcement update, the last video, that we were going to be going through a private agency. So the way that foster care is working right now here in the States is that the government is so, Zoe, come here. Um, the system is so overloaded with kids right now that the government cannot handle all of these cases. So they're actually outsourcing and hiring private agencies to help them carry this load because there are so many kids in the system. I think we mentioned this too, but we found out that since 2010, um, the amount of children in foster care has risen by 54% and it's primarily attributed to the opioid crisis which every time I say that, I end up wanting to go on a whole rant that I'm not gonna go on yet. Um, but it's risen by a lot. There are a lot of kids that are in the foster care system now because their parents are either dying from opioids or they're so addicted and caught up in that world, they're neglecting their children, they're not able to take care of them and all of that. So we ended up going through a, or it looks like we're going to be going through a private agency. We had a lot of people tell us that that was the way to go. And I think we told you guys that one of my childhood best friend's mom, um, she runs a organization for children that have aged out of the foster care system back in California. So when we decided we wanted to go down this path, we had like a two hour phone call with her and really talked about everything. And she was really adamant, like go with an agency, especially I think on top of that, just because of like my concerns. I mentioned this in the last video. I feel like the government is like school on steroids and I didn't do well in school. I'm like, I need someone between us who understands like my eccentric personality. So we decided to go through an agency. We're not gonna say who our agency is quite yet. I don't really know why. We just don't feel like we should yet. But we did some research in Nashville and um, my friend's mom, Gina, actually sent us two recommendations for agencies that she was like, these look like good agencies that you could go through. My agency in California knows them. Um, and I you know, went through their site, they look like good agencies. They were both Christian agencies. Um, and the agency that we're actually going through right now, we had to fully sign like a statement of faith, like to acknowledge where our beliefs are and to make sure they line up with theirs so that as we move forward with them and we're placed with kids, they understand that like our, our beliefs and our lens that we see the world through lines up with theirs as an agency. So, um, yeah, so we had our first meeting with them about a week and a half, a week ago, Yeah. a week ago. And it was really just to interview them and find out like, okay, when are the classes? Do we want to come here? Do we get good vibes from these people? Um, and then just to ask a couple of specific questions. So I give us good feedback too. So yeah, what is something that stood out to you? Because I, I know it stood out to me. I think I remember them acknowledging that they felt like we were in a good place to uh, to start the foster care journey, I guess. Mm. Um, and when they said that, it just made me wonder, like. I wonder how many people show up to the orientation or whatever and then find out and learn what oh, foster like care actually is unaware. and then like they and then they don't come back and finish the class and get certified so I'm I'm gonna ask that um, in the first class like what's the follow-through rate I mean keep in mind and if they say 40% it's gonna be a really awkward moment to look around the room 60% of you are going to leave. Keep in mind, part of me is terrified by all of this. You're so confident, but I'm like, what if like I become one of those I, people? I'm just making that I'm like, I can't happens, handle this. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, I think what shook me the most about that meeting, um, or not shook me the most, let me back up. We've done so much research that nothing in that hour meeting was really like, what? Oh, I didn't know that. Except for one thing and that's side note also not like bragging because i know that when we actually take the full-on classes there's going to probably be tons that i don't know and then we'll actually get a child and that's going to be a whole different ball game but because we have been watching so many videos and having so many conversations with people 
we're not going in like blind, like you said, like what is a foster parent? Right. Um, so, but what they said that I had never heard before was that part of the process of reunifying a child with their family, with their mom and their dad or whatever the situation is, um, is the child's health and development too. So I thought, you know, when a child is taken away from their parent parents, um, the parents are put on an action plan. Like, okay, you have to have clean drug tests, you have to get a job, you have to do this, you have to do that. And then if they do all of those things, it's like, congratulations, you get your child back. Um, apparently, that is not true from what I could understand in that conversation. That's only part of it. Apparently, yes, the parents have to do that, but then it's our job as the foster parents to also um, make sure that the child is developmentally where they're supposed to be for their age. Now that might sound obvious in some ways, so let me clarify. I was under the impression that if we get a placement, we have a child, that it's like, duh, you take care of the child. Oh, do they need certain nutritional supplements? Do they need a kind of therapy? Or do they need to be you know, tutored in this area, whatever? I just thought like that's what you do with a kid in general, you take care of their needs. But that's actually part of their action plan and when you go to these meetings with like for us it will be the agency and they'll be the social worker there whoever um we actually have to report to them oh little sally is actually you know sp her speech is delayed by three years she really needs a speech therapist I made or that they've lot. got a couple rotten teeth and it's really smelly they have an approved dentist and we take the kid there. We don't have to pay for that. It's the social. It's the. It's the state. It's the it's the tax dollars that pay for that, and and they have their approved dentist that works on it. So yeah, we didn't know that like we aren't gonna have to pay for those things. We didn't know that like that's all gonna have to be reported to them. We didn't know that that's part of their action plan is like their wellness to be united with their family. Um, I it, guess. Part of the reason why they do stuff like that is they don't want, well, since we have to pay it, we're just going to take it to the cheapest dentist and, and get this deal or we're going to do it ourselves in the garage. Or, oh know. my God. I also <laughs> think it's because the kids are technically a ward of the state. We're taking care of them on behalf of the state as long as they're a foster They get kid. to sleep here and we feed them and we yeah, make right. them feel safe. And if love. they're shivering with fear all the time, it's like we have to help them know that they're safe, um, and that's our job. And then, uh, you know, there's there's many different jobs to take care of a child, and that's what our job is. Yeah, we so, don't have to delegate. That's what the agents do, do. Yeah, and I was a little bit weirded out when they were telling me this. Like, oh no, every single thing. Like, because in my head, I'm like. Well, I just want to like see an issue and take care of it like like they're my kid I know they're not but like that's the way I thought you were gonna operate I thought that's what you do and they were like actually we think that you're gonna like this because it sounds a little bit like uh, an extra step which we'll find out if it is that but they were like it sounds like that but in reality it's more like having extra team players they're like it's support that we think you're really gonna like and find helpful and one of the questions that I'd ask is uh, the parents do have visitation rights and they are unsupervised in many cases. Case maybe by not, case. Maybe not all cases, but. Um, and the volume of those per month varies as well. It could be two visits a week, it could be two visits a month. Uh, yeah, it just depends. Yeah. And we. we I want to kind of go back to the very first thing that I brought up when someone was like, are you guys going to continue being foster parents after you adopt? Or some people who didn't understand that we want to adopt, they just thought we just want to be foster parents forever. My answer to that is we have no idea. <laughs> because we never expected to be in this position when we started, I officially feel like we can't make any claims. Like we can't make claims about the ages we're going for, the amount of kids we're going for, nothing. Because God completely changed our path and our hearts as we were going. So we can't really answer your questions. I kind of just think like 
hey, we'll just see what God uses us to do, what he wants us to do, what we feel called to do. You know, I've, I've seen comments earlier on in our adoption videos from people that were like, I don't like the phrase being called. Like, I think it can be a cop out. Like, I don't, I don't feel called to do this, or I do feel called to do that. And I kind of get where you're coming from. Cause I, I don't get. care if you don't like it though. Well, <laughs> yes, but I kind of <laughs> get where you're coming from, <laughs> if that makes sense. But at the same time, I don't agree. I do think that people are called to different things and I think people's callings change and I think God equips your heart and your mind and prepares you for things. And so I really just think, we'll freaking see, man. What I saw a commercial on TV yesterday. Um, people neglect their animals too, hmm. right? So a dog could be chained up in the backyard and then it's winter, it's snowing things shivering People outside do that? yeah this they're shivering outside wow. it doesn't eat it's eating snow just to keep alive and it's just oh, slowly baby. dying that's so sad the government comes in and they take those dogs too well they go to the pound they're going to be put down in a few days if no one takes them Man. so that was the commercial adopt the dog and then you can also wear the free t-shirt saying I adopted a dog. Some people feel like they are called to exactly. adopt animals exactly. and they're coming from a similar situation just like these kids are. It's like they're just left there alone. Some people feel and called to be an activist for cancer, anti-cancer. Right. There's so many ca causes in the world because there are so many problems in the world and I do not like it when people who are a pioneer, if that's the word, a champion for a problem in the world, make other people who are not championing, championing, is that a word, their same problem, make them feel guilty. Because I'm like, dude, there's like a billion problems. You handle that problem, I'm gonna go handle the problem that I feel called to. Don't make me feel like the problem that you're working on is worse than this problem. Um, I really don't like that. And so I just think, there's enough people on the planet to take care of different problems. Lots, and of, lots of areas around the globe still need fresh water. Some Jeez, people man. people have to actually go there with the mechanical mind and the ability to do something and actually do it. Yeah. It's people not for everybody, but some people do it. Good for them. Yeah. Because yeah, somebody's got to do it. That's a horrible problem. A need, there's a need for a lot, and you can't do everything. You can't do everything. Exactly. So um, I actually, I guess the final thing before we go to update you, we go to, it's required, even though I don't, I don't know what else we're going to learn now that we had this hour long interview with them and we've done research. But before you go into your training classes, which in the state of Tennessee, they're called PATH classes, Parents as Tender Healers. That's such a corny name, but also amazing. Um, those are the certification classes in the state of Tennessee. So we're actually already registered for those classes, but you're still required to go to the introductory class. So we're going to that on January 6th. I will look like a crazy person because on January 4th, um, and you guys will see this video, I'm getting a full on like laser on my face, neck, chest, and shoulders. It's gonna be freaking crazy. So I'm gonna look like a lunatic at that meeting. Um, and we- Well, we go through all these classes, and we get certified to become foster parents, but every year it requires you to get recertified. But it's like five hours of training a year or something like that. 15 hours. There you go, 15 hours So it might be uh, retaking a CPR class or whatever, but um, if you want to continue being a foster parent, I guess, I don't know, maybe they'll clarify this. Maybe it's, maybe it's if, you want to continue being a foster parent, but you don't currently have kids in your residence, or you, I don't or know. Maybe even if you still do, I don't know. Either way, I think you do have to keep uh, researching every year. But it's but we won't be dealing deal. with that till two thousand twenty. So what do you mean? Well, we're getting certified in two thousand nineteen. Oh. So you're kind of jumping like ahead, is what I'm saying. But mm -hmm. he is right. So we'll take these classes. I think there's six of them. Seven of them, something like that. Six. We start well, mid-January. Right? There's the intro class. I I don't know. I think and you're then right. Four of the others. Yeah. Uh, so we start mid-January. We finish mid end of February, and if we deem it interesting enough, and if you guys want, 
which I'm inclined to say yes, then we will do an update basically after every single class so we can kind of let you know what path classes look like because I believe that path classes are in a lot of states in the US. This is not just a Tennessee thing. I don't know what states. I know they're not in every single state, but they're in a lot of states. And apparently these classes were developed by like, what are they called? Early childhood professionals, psychologists, people that have um, a lot of extensive experience and training in trauma. So it's going to be really interesting. And then things like you said, like CPR classes, um, stuff like that. So we will be back, I guess, probably within the next couple of weeks to update you guys on our next, our first training, if you want that. And we're getting the show on the road. Oh, so many of you guys asked us if we saw Instant Family. <laughs> we saw Instant Family the weekend we decided to become foster parents. And it was completely ironic. Like, yeah. we were like, let's do this. And then I was like, oh, damn, that movie's out. And we went and saw it, like, the same weekend we had gotten the email back from our agency for our meeting. I think we're going to go try to see it again yes. next weekend. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hopefully it's still out. You have to see it. I've never laughed out loud and cried so much in one movie. It, it was a literal emotional roller coaster. It was the cutest most well done film. I loved it. So I just wanted to throw that out there. So that's it. I think we don't have anything else to say, right? Let's go to Costco. All right. Costco time. All right. Bye guys.